The Roman Breviary Latin, Breviarium Romanum, is the liturgical book of the Latin liturgical rites of the Catholic Church containing the public or canonical prayers, hymns, the psalms, readings, and notations for everyday use, especially by bishops, priests, and deacons in the divine office i.e., at the canonical hours or liturgy of the hours, the Christian's daily prayer. The word breviary, in general, refers to a collection of Christian orders of prayers and readings, such as contained in Anglican or Lutheran resources. It may also be used to refer to an abridged version of any text or a brief account or summary of some subject, but is primarily used to refer to a Christian liturgical book. The volume containing the daily hours of Catholic prayer was published as the Breviarium Romanum Roman Breviary until the reforms of Paul VI, when it became known as the Liturgy of the Hours. However, these terms are used interchangeably to refer to the office in all its forms. This entry deals with the Roman breviary prior to the changes introduced by Pope Paul VI in 1974. Topic: <inaudible> Origin of name. Topic: This word breviary, lot, breviarium, signifies in its primary acceptation an abridgment or a compendium. It is often employed in this sense by Christian authors, e.g. Breviarium Fidei, Breviarium in Salmos, Breviarium Canonum, Breviarium Regularum. In liturgical language breviary has a special meaning, indicating a book furnishing the regulations for the celebration of Mass or the canonical office, and may be met with under the titles Breviarium Ecclesiastici Ordinis, or Breviarium Ecclesia Romancae In the 9th century Alcuin uses the word to designate an office abridged or simplified for the use of the laity. Prudentius of Troyes, about the same period, composed a breviarium psaltery v. Inf. v. History. In an ancient inventory occurs breviarium antiphonary, meaning, extracts from the antiphonary. In the Vita Aldrici, occurs, secut in plenaries et brevaris ecclesia e justum continentor. Again, in the inventories in the catalogues, such notes as these may be met with. Sunt et duo cursinari et tres benedictionales libri, ex his unis habit obsequium mortuorum et unis breviarius, or Prater breviarium quadum quad usque ad festivitatum s Joannis Baptiste retinabant, etc. Monte Cassino about AD 1100 obtained a book titled, Incipit breviarium sive ordo officiorum per totam anni decursionum. From such references, and from others of a like nature, Quaisnell gathers that by the word breviarium was at first designated a book furnishing the rubrics, a sort of ordo. The title breviary, as we employ it, that is, a book containing the entire canonical office, appears to date from the 11th century. Saint Gregory VII having, indeed, abridged the order of prayers, and having simplified the liturgy as performed at the Roman court, this abridgment received the name of breviary, which was suitable, since, according to the etymology of the word, it was an abridgment. The name has been extended to books which contain in one volume, or at least in one work, liturgical books of different kinds, such as the Psalter, the Antiphonary, the Responsoriary, the Lectionary, etc. In this connection it may be pointed out that in this sense the word, as it is used nowadays, is illogical, it should be named a plenarium rather than a breviarium, since, liturgically speaking, the word plenarium exactly designates such books as contain several different compilations united under one cover. This is pointed out, however, simply to make still clearer the meaning and origin of the word, and section V will furnish a more detailed explanation of the formation of the breviary. Topic history topic topic Early history topic The canonical hours of the breviary owe their remote origin to the Old Covenant when God commanded the Aaronic priests to offer morning and evening sacrifices. Other inspiration may have come from David's words in the Psalms seven times a day I praise you Ps. 119-164, as well as, the just man meditates on the law day and night Ps. 1-2. Regarding Daniel, three times daily he was kneeling and offering prayers and thanks to his God. Dan 6:10. In the early days of Christian worship, the sacred scriptures furnished all that was thought necessary, containing as it did the books from which the lessons were read and the psalms that were recited. The first step in the evolution of the breviary was the separation of the Psalter into a choir book. At first, the president of the local church, bishop, or the leader of the choir chose a particular psalm as he thought appropriate. 
From about the 4th century certain psalms began to be grouped together, a process that was furthered by the monastic practice of daily reciting the 150 psalms. This took so much time that the monks began to spread it over a week, dividing each day into hours, and allotting to each hour its portion of the Psalter. Saint Benedict in the 6th century drew up such an arrangement, probably, though not certainly, on the basis of an older Roman division which, though not so skillful, is the one in general use. Gradually there were added to these Psalter choir books editions in the form of antiphons, responses, collects or short prayers, for the use of those not skillful at improvisation and metrical compositions. Jean Belleth, a 12th-century liturgical author, gives the following list of books necessary for the right conduct of the canonical office, the Antiphonarium, the Old and New Testaments, the Passionarius Liber, and the Legendarius dealing respectively with martyrs and saints, the Homilarius homilies on the, Gospels, the Sermologus collection of sermons and the works of the Fathers, besides, of course, the Psalterium and the Collectarium. To overcome the inconvenience of using such a library the breviary came into existence and use. Already in the 9th century Prudentius, Bishop of Troyes, had in a breviarium psaltery made an abridgment of the Psalter for the laity, giving a few psalms for each day, and Alcuin had rendered a similar service by including a prayer for each day and some other prayers, but no lessons or homilies. The breviary rightly so called, however, only dates from the 11th century. The earliest mis containing the whole canonical office is of the year 1099 and is in the Mazarin Library. Gregory VII Pope 1073 too, simplified the liturgy as performed at the Roman court, and gave his abridgment the name of breviary, which thus came to denote a work which from another point of view might be called a plenary, involving as it did the collection of several works into one. There are several extant specimens of 12th-century breviaries, all Benedictine, but under Innocent III Pope 1198 their use was extended, especially by the newly founded and active Franciscan order. These preaching friars, with the authorization of Gregory IX, adopted with some modifications, e.g. the substitution of the Gallican for the Roman version of the Psalter, the breviary hitherto used exclusively by the Roman court, and with it gradually swept out of Europe all the earlier partial books, legendaries, responsories, and c. and to some extent the local breviaries like that of Sarum. Finally, Nicholas III Pope 1277 adopted this version both for the Curia and for the Basilicas of Rome, and thus made its position secure. <laughs> Local and regular breviaries The Benedictines and Dominicans have breviaries of their own. The only other types that merit notice are the Mozarabic breviary, once in use throughout all Spain, but now confined to a single foundation at Toledo, it is remarkable for the number and length of its hymns, and for the fact that the majority of its collects are addressed to God the Son. The Ambrosian, now confined to Milan, where it owes its retention to the attachment of the clergy and people to their traditionary rites, which they derive from St. Ambrose. <laughs> Early modern reforms Until the Council of Trent every bishop had full power to regulate the breviary of his own diocese, and this was acted upon almost everywhere. Each monastic community, also, had one of its own. Pius V Pope 1566 however, while sanctioning those which could show at least 200 years of existence, made the Roman obligatory in all other places. But the influence of the Roman Rite has gradually gone much beyond this, and has superseded almost all the local uses. The Roman has thus become nearly universal, with the allowance only of additional offices for saints specially venerated in each particular diocese. The Roman breviary has undergone several revisions, the most remarkable of these is that by Francis Quignones, Cardinal of Santa Croce in Jerusalem 1536, which, though not accepted by Rome, it was approved by Clement VII and Paul III, and permitted as a substitute for the unrevised breviary, until Pius V in 1568 excluded it as too short and too modern, and issued a reformed edition breviarium pianum, pian breviary of the old breviary, formed the model for the still more thorough reform made in 15 1949 by the Church of England, whose daily morning and evening services are but a condensation and simplification of the breviary offices. Some parts of the prefaces at the beginning of the English prayer book are free translations of those of Quignones. 
The Pian Breviary was again altered by Sixtus V in 1588, who introduced the revised Vulgate, in 1602 by Clement VIII through Baronius and Bellarmine, especially as concerns the rubrics, and by Urban VIII 1623 a purist who altered the text of certain hymns. In the 17th and 18th centuries a movement of revision took place in France, and succeeded in modifying about half the breviaries of that country. Historically, this proceeded from the labors of Jean de Lannoy (1603–1678), Le Danischer des Saints, and Louis Sebastian Le Nine de Tilmont, who had shown the falsity of numerous lives of the saints. While theologically it was produced by the Port Royal School, which led men to dwell more on communion with God as contrasted with the invocation of the saints. This was mainly carried out by the adoption of a rule that all antiphons and responses should be in the exact words of Scripture, which, of course, cut out the whole class of appeals to created beings. The services were at the same time simplified and shortened, and the use of the whole Psalter every week which had become a mere theory in the Roman breviary, owing to its frequent supersession by saints' day services was made a reality. These reformed French breviaries, e.g. the Paris Breviary of 1680 by Archbishop François de Harlay and that of 1736 by Archbishop Charles Gaspard Guillaume de Vintimel du Luc show a deep knowledge of Holy Scripture, and much careful adaptation of different texts. <laughs> Later modern reforms during the pontificate of Pius IX a strong ultramontane movement arose against the French breviaries of 1680 and 1736. This was inaugurated by Montalembert, but its literary advocates were chiefly Dom Geranger, a learned Benedictine monk, abbot of Solsmas, and Louis Vello of the Univers, and it succeeded in suppressing them everywhere, the last diocese to surrender being Orleans in 1875. The Jansenist and Gallican influence was also strongly felt in Italy and in Germany, where breviaries based on the French models were published at Cologne, Munster, Mainz and other towns. Meanwhile, under the direction of Benedict XIV Pope 1740 a special congregation collected much material for an official revision, but nothing was published. In 1902, under Leo XIII, a commission under the presidency of Monsignor Louis de Chesney was appointed to consider the breviary, the missal, the pontifical and the ritual. Significant changes came in 1910 with the reform of the Roman breviary by Pope Pius X. This revision modified the traditional psalm scheme so that, while all 150 psalms were used in the course of the week, these were said without repetition. Those assigned to the Sunday office underwent the least revision, although noticeably fewer psalms are recited at matins, and both lauds and compline are slightly shorter due to psalms or in the case of compline the first few verses of a psalm being removed. Pius X was probably influenced by earlier attempts to eliminate repetition in the Psalter, most notably the liturgy of the Benedictine Congregation of St. Maurer. However, since Cardinal Quignonez's attempt to reform the breviary employed this principle, albeit with no regard to the traditional scheme—such notions had floated around in the Western Church, and can particularly be seen in the Paris breviary. Pope Pius XII introduced optional use of a new translation of the Psalms from the Hebrew to a more classical Latin. Most breviaries published in the late 1950s and early 1960s used this Pian Psalter. Pope John XXIII also revised the breviary in 1960, introducing changes drawn up by his predecessor Pope Pius XII. The most notable alteration is the shortening of most feasts from nine to three lessons at matins, keeping only the scripture readings the former lesson I, then lessons E and E together, followed by either the first part of the patristic reading lesson v, or, for most feasts, a condensed version of the former second nocturne, which was formerly used when a feast was reduced in rank and commemorated. Topic. Manuscripts and printed editions Topic. Before the rise of the mendicant orders wandering friars in the 13th century, the daily services were usually contained in a number of large volumes. The first occurrence of a single manuscript of the daily office was written by the Benedictine order at Monte Cassino in Italy in 1099. By a strange twist, the Benedictines were not a mendicant order, but a stable, monastery-based order, and single-volume breviaries are rare from this early period. 
The arrangement of the Psalms in the rule of Saint Benedict had a profound impact upon the breviaries used by secular and monastic clergy alike, until 1911 when Pope Saint Pius X introduced his reform of the Roman breviary. In many places, every diocese, order or ecclesiastical province maintained its own edition of the breviary. However, mendicant friars traveled frequently and needed a shortened, or abbreviated, daily office contained in one portable book, and single-volume breviaries flourished from the 13th century onwards. These abbreviated volumes soon became very popular and eventually supplanted the Catholic Church's curia office, previously said by non-monastic clergy. Before the advent of printing, breviaries were written by hand and were often richly decorated with initials and miniature illustrations telling stories in the lives of Christ or the saints, or stories from the Bible. Later printed breviaries usually have woodcut illustrations, interesting in their own right but the poor relation of the beautifully illuminated breviaries. The beauty and value of many of the Latin breviaries were brought to the notice of English churchmen by one of the numbers of the Oxford Tracts for the Times, since which time they have been much more studied, both for their own sake and for the light they throw upon the English prayer book. From a bibliographical point of view some of the early printed breviaries are among the rarest of literary curiosities, being merely local. The copies were not spread far, and were soon worn out by the daily use made of them. Doubtless many editions have perished without leaving a trace of their existence, while others are known by unique copies. In Scotland the only one which has survived the convulsions of the 16th century is Aberdeen Breviary, a Scottish form of the Sarum Office the Sarum Rite was much favoured in Scotland as a kind of protest against the jurisdiction claimed by the Diocese of York, revised by William Elphinstone Bishop 1483 and printed at Edinburgh by Walter Chapman and Andrew Myler in 1509-1510. Four copies have been preserved of it, of which only one is complete, but it was reprinted in facsimile in 1854 for the Bannatine Club by the munificence of the Duke of Buccleuch. It is particularly valuable for the trustworthy notices of the early history of Scotland which are embedded in the lives of the national saints. Though enjoined by royal mandate in 1501 for general use within the realm of Scotland, it was probably never widely adopted. The new Scottish proprium sanctioned for the Catholic province of St Andrews in 1903 contains many of the old Aberdeen collects and antiphons. The Sarum or Salisbury breviary itself was very widely used. The first edition was printed at Venice in 1483 by Reynald de Novimaggio in folio, the latest at Paris, 1556-1557. While modern breviaries are nearly always printed in four volumes, one for each season of the year, the editions of the Sarum never exceeded two parts. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Contents of the Roman Breviary. Topic: At the beginning stands the usual introductory matter, such as the tables for determining the date of Easter, the calendar, and the general rubrics. The breviary itself is divided into four seasonal parts—winter, spring, summer, autumn—and comprises under each part the Psalter Proprium de Tempore the special office of the season Proprium Sanctorum special offices of saints Commune Sanctorum general offices for saints Extra services, these parts are often published separately. The Psalter Topic. This psalm book is the very backbone of the breviary, the groundwork of the Catholic prayer book, out of it have grown the antiphons, responsories and versicles. Until the 1911 reform, the psalms were arranged according to a disposition dating from the 8th century, as follows, Psalms 1-108, with some omissions, were recited at matins, 12 each day from Monday to Saturday, and 18 on Sunday. The omissions were said at Lodz, Prime and Compline. Psalms 109-147 except 117, 118, and 142 were said at Vespers, five each day. Psalms 148-150 were always used at Lodz, and give that hour its name. The text of this Psalter is that commonly known as the Gallican. The name is misleading, for it is simply the second revision AD 392 made by Jerome of the old Atala version originally used in Rome. Jerome's first revision of the Atala AD 
383, known as the Roman, is still used at St. Peter's in Rome, but the Gallican, thanks especially to St. Gregory of Tours, who introduced it into Gaul in the 6th century, has ousted it everywhere else. The Antiphonary of Bangor proves that Ireland accepted the Gallican version in the 7th century, and the English Church did so in the 10th. Following the 1911 reform, Matins was reduced to nine psalms every day, with the other psalms redistributed throughout Prime, Terse, Sext, and Compline. For Sundays and special feasts Lauds and Vespers largely remained the same, Psalm chapter 118 remained distributed at the Little Hours and Psalms 4, 90, and 130 were kept at Compline. Topic the Proprium de Tempora topic This contains the office of the seasons of the Christian year Advent to Trinity, a conception that only gradually grew up. There is here given the whole service for every Sunday and weekday, the proper antiphons, responsories, hymns, and especially the course of daily scripture reading, averaging about 20 verses a day, and roughly arranged thus, Advent, Isaiah Epiphany to Septuagesima, Pauline Epistles Lent, Patristic Homilies Genesis on Sundays Passiontide, Jeremiah Easter to Pentecost, Acts, Catholic Epistles and Revelation Pentecost to August, Samuel and Kings August to Advent, Wisdom Books, Maccabees, Prophets topic The Proprium Sanctorum topic. This contains the lessons, psalms and liturgical formularies for saints' festivals, and depends on the days of the secular month. The readings of the Second Nocturne are mainly hagiological biography, with homilies or papal documents for certain major feasts, particularly those of Jesus and Mary. Some of this material has been revised by Leo XIII, in view of archaeological and other discoveries. The Third Nocturne consists of a homily on the Gospel which is read at that day's Mass. Covering a great stretch of time and space, they do for the worshipper in the field of church history what the scripture readings do in that of biblical history. Topic the Commune Sanctorum topic This comprises psalms, antiphons, lessons, and c. for feasts of various groups or classes 12 in all, e.g. apostles, martyrs, confessors, virgins, and the Blessed Virgin Mary. These offices are of very ancient date, and many of them were probably in origin proper to individual saints. They contain passages of great literary beauty. The lessons read at the Third Nocturne are patristic homilies on the Gospels, and together form a rough summary of theological instruction. Topic extra service topic Here are found the little office of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the office for the dead obligatory on All Souls Day, and offices peculiar to each diocese. Topic elements of the hours topic It has already been indicated, by reference to matins, lauds, and c, that not only each day, but each part of the day, has its own office, the day being divided into liturgical hours, a detailed account of these will be found in the article canonical hours. Each of the hours of the office is composed of the same elements, and something must be said now of the nature of these constituent parts, of which mention has here and there been already made. They are, psalms including canticles, antiphons, responsories, hymns, lessons, little chapters, versicles and collects. Topic psalms topic Before the 1911 reform, the multiplication of saints' festivals, with practically the same festal psalms, tended to repeat the about one-third of the Psalter, with a correspondingly rare recital of the remaining two-thirds. Following this reform, the entire Psalter is again generally recited each week, with the festal psalms restricted to only the highest-ranking feasts. As in the Greek usage and in the Benedictine, certain canticles like the Song of Moses Exodus XV, the Song of Hannah 1 Sam, e, the Prayer of Habakkuk e, the Prayer of Hezekiah Isaiah XXXVIII, and other similar Old Testament passages, and, from the New Testament, the Magnificat, the Benedictus and the Nunc Dimittis, are admitted as psalms. Antiphons <inaudible> 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 The antiphons are short liturgical forms, sometimes of biblical, sometimes of patristic origin, used to introduce a psalm. The term originally signified a chant by alternate choirs, but has quite lost this meaning in the breviary. Responsories <inaudible> 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 The responsories are similar in form to the antiphons, but come at the end of the psalm, being originally the reply of the choir or congregation to the presenter who recited the psalm. Hymns The hymns are short poems going back in part to the days of Prudentius, Synesius, Gregory of Nazianus and Ambrose 4th and 5th centuries, but mainly the work of medieval authors. 
Topic: Lessons. Topic: The lessons, as has been seen, are drawn variously from the Bible, the Acts of the Saints, and the Fathers of the Church. In the primitive church, books afterwards excluded from the canon were often read, e.g. the letters of Clement of Rome and the Shepherd of Hermas. In later days the churches of Africa, having rich memorials of martyrdom, used them to supplement the reading of scripture. Monastic influence accounts for the practice of adding to the reading of a biblical passage some patristic commentary or exposition. Books of homilies were compiled from the writings of S.S. Augustine, Hilary, Athanasius, Isidore, Gregory the Great and others, and formed part of the library of which the breviary was the ultimate compendium. In the lessons, as in the Psalms, the order for special days breaks in upon the normal order of ferial offices and dislocates the scheme for consecutive reading. The lessons are read at matins which is subdivided into three nocturnes. Topic. Little chapters. Topic. The little chapters are very short lessons read at the other hours. Topic. Versicles Topic. The versicles are short responsories used after the little chapters in the minor hours. They appear after the hymns in lauds and vespers. Topic. Collects Topic. The collects come at the close of the office and are short prayers summing up the supplications of the congregation. They arise out of a primitive practice on the part of the bishop, local president, examples of which are found in the Didash teaching of the apostles and in the letters of Clement of Rome and Cyprian. With the crystallization of church order improvisation in prayer largely gave place to set forms, and collections of prayers were made which later developed into sacramentaries and orationals. The collects of the breviary are largely drawn from the Gelasian and other sacramentaries, and they are used to sum up the dominant idea of the festival in connection with which they happen to be used. Topic. Celebration Topic. Before 1910, the difficulty of harmonizing the proprium de tempore and the proprium sanctorum, to which reference has been made, was only partly met in the 37 chapters of general rubrics. Additional help was given by a kind of Catholic churchman's almanac, called the Ordo Recitandi Divini Offici, published in different countries and dioceses, and giving, under every day, minute directions for proper reading. In 1960, John XXIII simplified the rubrics governing the breviary in order to make it easier to use. Every cleric in holy orders, and many other members of religious orders, must publicly join in or privately read aloud i.e. using the lips as well as the eyes. It takes about two hours in this way the whole of the breviary services allotted for each day. In large churches where they were celebrated the services were usually grouped, e.g. matins and lauds about 7.30 a.m., prime, terse high mass, sext, and nun about 10 a.m., vespers and compline 4 p.m., and from 4 to 8 hours depending on the amount of music and the number of high masses are thus spent in choir. Lay use of the breviary has varied throughout the church's history. In some periods laymen did not use the breviary as a manual of devotion to any great extent. The late medieval period saw the recitation of certain hours of the Little Office of the Blessed Virgin, which was based on the breviary in form and content, becoming popular among those who could read, and Bishop Chaloner did much to popularize the hours of Sunday Vespers and Compline albeit in English translation in his Garden of the Soul in the 18th century. The liturgical movement in the 20th century saw renewed interest in the offices of the breviary and several popular editions were produced, containing the vernacular as well as the Latin. The complete pre-Pius X Roman breviary was translated into English by the Marquis of Butte in 1879, New Ed., with a trans, of the Martyrology, 1908, French and German. Butte's version is noteworthy for its inclusion of the skillful renderings of the ancient hymns by J. H. Newman, J. M. Neal and others. Several editions of the Pius X breviary were produced during the 20th century, including a notable edition prepared with the assistance of the Sisters of Stanbrook Abbey in the 1950s. Two editions in English and Latin were produced in the following decade, which conformed to the rubrics of 1960, published by Liturgical Press and Benziger in the United States. 
These used the Pius XII Psalter. Baronius Presses S revised edition of the liturgical press edition uses the older Gallican Psalter of St. Jerome. This edition was published and released in 2012 for pre-orders only. In 2013, the publication has resumed printing and is available on Baronius's website. Under Pope Benedict XVI's motu proprio summorum pontificum, Catholic bishops, priests, and deacons are again permitted to use the 1961 edition of the Roman Breviary, promulgated by Pope John XXIII to satisfy their obligation to recite the Divine Office every day. In 2008, an i-breviary was launched, which combines the ancient breviaries with the latest computer technology. See also Topic Book of Hours Canonical Hours Horologian Latin Psalters Little Office of Our Lady Liturgical Books of the Roman Rite Liturgy of the Hours Topic Notes Topic Topic References Topic F. Cabral, Introduction Ox Etudes Liturgics Propst, Kirchenlichs, E. S. V. Brevier. Baumer, Geschichte des Breviers, Freiburg, 1895. P. Batifol, La Histoire du Brevier Roman, Paris, 1893, Eng. Tr. Bado, Le Brevier Roman, 1907. A complete bibliography is appended to the article by F. Cabral in the Catholic Encyclopedia, Volume E, 1908. Kellerbook.com, Information Concerning the Development of Breviaries and Psalters A History of the Divine Office, Breviary from EWTN This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Chisholm, Hugh, ed., 1911. Breviary. Encyclopedia Britannica, 4 11th ed. Cambridge University Press. p. 503-505. Topic external links Topic Psalter schemas, Catholic, from 1900 present Topic Medieval breviaries Topic 14th century breviary made in Paris for Marie de saint Paul, Countess of Pembroke, Cambridge University Library 14th century breviary written in Gothic textualist script, Center for Digital Initiatives, University of Vermont Libraries Topic Breviaries according the curial or Roman use pre-Vatican II Topic The 1908 Roman Breviary in English pre-Pius X Psalter, Winter Part 1. The 1908 Roman Breviary in English pre-Pius X Psalter, Spring Part 2. The 1908 Roman Breviary in English pre-Pius X Psalter, Summer Part 3. The 1908 Roman Breviary in English pre-Pius X Psalter, Autumn, Fall Part 4. The 1961 Roman Breviary in Latin The 1911 Roman Breviary in Latin and English Canonical Hours According to the 1911 Breviarium Romanum Without the Festal Propers of Common of the Saints Breviarium Romanum Cum Salterium, Proprio, and Officis Sanctorum Ad Usum Clary Basilicae Vaticanae, Pars Autumnalis Breviarium Romanum Ex Decreto Sacrosancti Concilii Tridentini Restitutum 1888, Spring Breviarium Romanum Ex Decreto Sacrosancti Concilii Cilii Tridentini Restitutum, Pars Himalis, 1799, Breviarium Romanum ex Decreto Sacrosancti Concilii Tridentini Restitutum, Pars Verna, 1799, Breviarium Romanum ex Decreto Sacrosancti Concilii Tridentini Restitutum, Pars Autumnalis, 1799, Breviarium Romanum, Pars Autumnalis, 1828, Breviarium Romanum, Pars Estiva, 1828, Breviarium Romanum, Pars Autumnalis, 1861, The Breviary of Quignones. 1537 Divinum Officium in Latin and English Topic Breviaries according pre-Tridentine usages outside of Rome pre-Vatican II Topic Breviarium Ordinis Fratrum Beatissimae Virginis Mariae de Monte Carmelo Pars Hymalis Carmelite Breviary Breviary
Imperium Ordinis Fratrum Bittissime Virginis Mariae de Monte Carmelo, Pars Estiva Carmelite Breviary Breviarium Cistercens Reformatum the Cistercian Breviary Breviarium Monasticum Juxta Regulum S, Patris Benedicti, Ad Usum, Pars Verna the Monastic Breviary according to the Benedictine usage Breviarium Monasticum Juxta Regulum S, Patris Benedicti, Ad Usum, Pars Autumnalis Breviarium Monasticum Juxta Regulum S, Patris Benedicti, Ad Usum, Pars Hyemalis Breviarium Monasticum Juxta Regulum S, Patris Benedicti, Ad Usum, Pars Estiva Breviarium Aberdenens the Aberdeen Breviary the Colbertine Breviary the Hereford Breviary Breviarium Ad Usum Insignis Ecclesia Serum the Serum Breviary Breviarium Ad Usum Insignis Ecclesi Eborosensis the York Breviary Breviary Offices from Lods to Compline Inclusive, Tr. from the Serum Book supplemented by Gallican and Monastic Uses Breviaries according the diocesan usages of France including that of Nantes, Orleans, Reims, etc. Breviarium Parisiens, Pars Verna, the Paris Breviary, Breviarium Gothicum, the Mozarabic Breviary Part One, Breviarium Gothicum, the Mozarabic Breviary Part Two, Breviarium Sacrum Ordinum Carthusiensis, the Carthusian Breviary, Breviarium Ambrosianum, Breviarium Juxta Ritum Sacra Ordinis Predicatorum, Dominican Breviary, Breviarium Canonicorum Regularium Ordinis Premonstratensis. Pars Hyemalis Premonstratensian Breviary Topic Contemporary IE Post Vatican II Breviaries Topic Universalis Online Breviary Liturgy of the Hours by Ebreviary a five-size booklet arrangement for those requiring printouts whether for individual hours or all the hours of a day combined Liturgy of the Carthusian Order of the Catholic Church Divine Office Non-Catholic breviaries The Treasury of Daily Prayer, the classic Christian hours of prayer, as used within the Lutheran Church since the 16th century, with psalms, hymns, scripture and readings, for every day. The Missio Dei Breviary Simpler and relatively accessible breviary composed from an Anabaptist theology. The Anglican Breviary, an adaptation of the 1911 Roman Breviary incorporating numerous modifications from Anglican sources. Brotherhood Prayer Book, a Lutheran book of liturgical hours with all 150 Psalms and Old Testament canticles in English and pointed with the Reformation Gregorian tones. Quote, <laughs>